Hi friends, I'm Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. And I just spilled water on myself trying to film this. <laughs> yep, that's the kind of day I'm having today, but that's okay. We're gonna be painting and we're gonna be talking about self-care guys. One thing I want to start changing on this channel a little bit is the fact that I am a mental health therapist. I'm not doing therapy on this channel, but I wanna encourage you guys to do self-care. And I talk about it from time to time, but I want you guys to understand the concepts behind why these self-care activities work and why they make us feel better. So, as we're painting this today, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about grounding, which is another way to be more mindful and present in all the activities that you're doing. Let's get to it. Friends, as we're starting to paint together and I'm using an aluminum can for my water cup because I'm on vacation and that's all I have, I want you guys to think about how you can relax your body and enjoy this experience together. Trying to have an overall really relaxing time. So right now I'm doing a side-facing daffodil. I've got my filbert brush, various yellows, and I'm using this side of the brush here, and then I'm gonna use the thicker side as well. So creating those two petals that stick out and that trumpet is up there, looking so fine. <laughs> um, adding in some more petal shapes here, and I think one more on the, the front side right there where the trumpet is. Now I left some white space. I'm keeping this really loose. And I'm just gonna start changing up the values, the lightness and darkness of the yellows as well as the shade of yellows. So now I'm doing a front facing and I've just left this middle really kind of like a star shape, really pretty little starburst happening there. Now I have my reference photo. I am not copying it in the least, but it is giving me a lot of inspiration. So when you see me painting, especially loose, you're gonna see Often I will have some type of photo or a reference from a book, and it just inspires what I'm doing as I'm painting this. So you can see I'm twisting and turning the brush, different angles, just so that I can get um, the different petal shapes. Now I'm going really fast with this one. Um, this one is it's just got a lot of spiky, a lot of layered petals, and you can also put in some more of that paint if you want to do some more concentrated paint. So the point of this exercise as I'm adding some white and lightening up that lemon yellow is to just find a space where you can take care of yourself, where you can relax. On this channel, I often teach you guys how to paint like me, basically, paint the different florals especially that I choose, but I want you to go further than that. As a mental health therapist, first and foremost, as my career, I want to encourage you just to let go, just to start putting these brush strokes on paper. I'm kind of doing the same type of mark making now, except some smaller versions with this light orangey color. You can start to poke in some extra dark paint, just really saturated. And then you can dip your brush squeegee off the side and lift off um, naturally lift off some of that color so that you're going to have lighter and darker and medium uh, values which is going to create interest in your painting now i'm adding in some oranges and some reds that are not in the photo i want you to just paint how you'd like to paint and i'm using the same brush throughout this whole painting because i want to show you some beautiful marks that you can create whether you're painting larger or painting smaller and when you twist and turn your brush you're going to get different marks. Now I am switching it up for the green here. This is my number six round brush from Christy Rice. It's her beautiful travel brush. So it's nice because it actually breaks down into a very short little brush for storing and for traveling. But I'm going to start putting in the centers. A nice pointy brush is really helpful for that. And just kind of stippling in, making it really loose and really easy going. So just take a deep breath as you are painting this. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it turns out, you guys. What matters is that you showed up today, that you're painting with me, or maybe you're going to paint later. Let's grab that filbert again because it's our buddy today. And just enjoy the process of creativity. You are using your right brain when you start to really understand how to paint and you're painting on your own. You're in that right brain, that creative side that really allows you to get into that flow state, to enjoy what you're doing. And when you're in that space, time passes and you have no idea because you're enjoying that moment so much. Let's do some red here in the center. I'm working on trying to have some balance, but at the same time, I'm not too concerned 
I'm not too concerned about that. Right now, I'm just trying to have a good time, trying to enjoy this self-care for myself. And I hope that you can also experience that today, grabbing that green again. And sometimes in that moment, I'm just trying to figure out what should I do. I wanted to mute out that green. I just made a dark red, so we're adding more green. And we're going to do that until we get that nice dark green shade that we're looking for. I like to vary up the greens because it keeps your painting interesting and it keeps the viewer interested as well. So let's go ahead and establish some stems for these florals. I'm not doing a tight bouquet today. We're just kind of doing this spray of flowers. We could do a vase, but I want to keep it easier, a little easy going. So just some fun little arced stems over here, connecting those tiny blooms together and kind of connecting everything into one bunch as all the stems are just flowing kind of into that center point in the painting. I wanted to mention something called grounding as well today. And grounding is this idea of when you're frustrated, you're anxious, you're worried, being able to get yourself back into your senses. What can you see, smell, taste, touch in here? Sometimes it's as simple as going for a walk in the grass, taking off your shoes and allowing your toes to just feel what it feels like to have them in the grass. Um, sometimes it's just touching a blanket and feeling the textures of that blanket. It's reminding you to be in that moment. You're present. You're not worried about the past or worried about the future. You're just there in the moment of what you're experiencing. And I hope that this is something that you can start to experience on a regular basis. As you're sitting down to create, to paint, to do art, whatever it is that your art form is, maybe it's even just playing music. And I don't say just for any reason other than maybe that's what brings you joy. And within that, when you start to put in your own creativity and start to make your own composition, music or art or otherwise, you start to experience that joy that comes when you are inventing something on your own. Let's continue with this mark making. See how simple this is, the side facings especially. Just some nice orange mixed in with my yellow and twisting and turning that brush is what's going to get you the most interesting and I would say most interesting and creative marks here. So one of the things your brain is involved in when you are doing this exercise is you are analyzing where to put things. If you're following this tutorial, maybe it's not so difficult for you, um, but if you're doing this on your own, you have to figure out what's a good attractive composition. If you don't have a reference photo that you're following exactly, this is challenging. And it's challenging the left side of your brain, figuring out where to put what, what colors and all that. And that's what I'm using today. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to you. I'm explaining all this information using my left brain. But when I was painting this, which I did on my own before voiceover, I was using the right side of my brain because I was just experimenting and playing around and getting lost in the moment. Um, I don't think I did so much analyzing because I had a photo that I roughly followed, um, but I was really just in that moment of forgetting the time, forgetting if I was hungry or tired or whatever it was, and I was just enjoying making something with my own hands. So now uh, getting back to the tutorial, we're just adding in some more of those thin stems. I do love a nice pointy round brush. And all the supplies will be linked for you guys uh, in the description of the video if you want to check them out. This palette was sent to me um, by the Paul Rubens people, and it's one of their newer palettes. It's called Kiaume, although I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But it's a really cute palette here. It's got a lot of colors, and this tray on the right actually comes out, so you can use the bottom too. I do love a lot of space for mixing, and so this one is great. And it's a bit smaller than some of my other palettes, so it's really nice for traveling as well. All right, we're gonna stipple in the center again. So we've done the first layer of our watercolor florals, and you might wanna take a step back and just kinda of look and see where do I need to start darkening things up. So I feel like I could leave it with this first layer. It's a really quick, snappy painting, was really fun to do. But if you're, if you're up to it, you can go ahead like me and start adding in not only some tiny little blooms to start filling in the space, but then we will eventually add some more saturated paint just to create some more texture and shadow and some nice pops of color as well. 
So I hope you are excited to pick up your own filbert brush sometime. They're wonderful. Uh, they just make florals, I should say. I was going to say life a lot easier, but when you're doing florals, it makes it a lot easier. Grabbing some splatter, putting it on my page here, just a little bit of light green color because I love splatter. If you don't know that by now, keep watching my videos and you will soon know this is a fact. All right, a little bit of green here for some of those side facings and just adding in that pop of color wherever you are seeing that it is necessary here. I'm just kind of looking around, finding the spaces where a little green needs to show up in this painting. So if you need to darken up some of your stems or add just a little sprig, then go ahead and do that right now. Keep it loose, keep your hold on your paintbrush loose as well and that's gonna create more of a loose painting in general. So I thought a little center here was in order. This one got forgotten. So we just add it wherever we need it. All right, so now we're going to take that more saturated yellow and just start going over the petals we already did so that we can darken some of it up and create some texture. Now, you don't have to keep it the same shade that you had before. You can add some more orange, you can add some white, you can add some of a, a bit of a different yellow and just really, you know, make it fun. Yellows are kind of hard to differentiate between and so I've got this orangey one here, which is gonna tie in nice with those tinier orangey flowers. So the next time you're feeling worried and stressed, take a deep breath, remind yourself that your situation will be okay, you're gonna figure out a solution, and you're also going to do some painting for self-care and ground yourself. Remember to be in the moment. Oh, 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 oh,